Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number seven. Day number seven. It says 3073, the Norse third edition, day seven. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems when they appeared first in the first edition, you will find all the original solutions at a much slower pace from from day number 25, from on day number 25 and 26, the problems that we're going to do today. Just type in GRE math day 25 or GRE math day 26 and you'll find the same problems, as I said, done at a little bit of a slower pace uh, with a little bit more in-depth ex explanation. This problem that we are about to do is on page number 137. Turn to it, page 137, problem number 6. Make sure the book is in front of you. And the concept that we are dealing with is weighted average. Weighted average. And if you want to get some more practice on the concept, if you want to do some more problems, basic math, the Seventy-six, ninety-five, one hundred and seventy-nine, and one hundred and eighty. There is a series of uh, videos on my channel, simply called, simply titled, Basic Math. Just type in Basic Math, day seventy-six, day ninety-five, and then there are two more which are a little bit more difficult, one seventy-nine, and one eighty. They all deal with the concept of weighted average, uh, something that you're likely to encounter in your exam. Here's what we are told. We are told that we have 43 people who gave, 43 people gave $60 each. 43 people gave $60 each. We are also told that 21 people gave $80 each. We are further told that 16 people gave $100 each. Question simply is, what is the average contribution? Obviously, it is the weighted average. So let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Let's find out what 43 times 60 is. 43 times 60. So that's 924. So it's 2490. So that part is done. Let's find out what 21 times 8 is. 21 times 8. So that's 8 and 16. So it's 1680. And 16 times 100 is just 1600. So that part is done. Let's find out the total contribution that was made. Total contribution was, this is 0, 8 plus 9, 8 plus 8 is 16, so it's 17, 7, carry 1, 4 plus 6 is 10, and 6 plus 1 is 7, so it's 17, 1, 7, carry 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. I get 5,770, which is not what I have in my notes. Did I make a mistake? 43 times 6. What the hell is going on here? 3, 3, 6, 18. 3, 6, R, 18. Carry 1. What the hell was I doing? Oh, I did 3 times 3. 3, 3 is a 9 I did. And then 4 times 6 is 24. I wasn't paying attention. 3, 6, 18, 8. Carry 1. 24 and 1 is 25. I have different numbers in my notes. So it's 25 to 58. This should have been... It's important to concentrate and not to talk too much. So you get 0, 16, 1, 12, and the other 6 is 18, 8, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 58, 60 is what I have. And how many people? We know now that the total amount that was contributed, the total amount that was given to the charity is $5,860. The question now is how many people gave that amount? Because we need to figure out the average. How many people gave that amount? What's right here? 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 0, carry 1. 1, 2, 4, 8. 80 people. Plus to the average cost contribution now. You just have to divide that amount by that amount. 5,860 divided by 80. Well, immediately we see 0 on top and the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. It's going to go away. Let's try 
to divide top and bottom by 2. Not try to, we're going to divide by 2 because they're both even numbers. 8 is going to become 4. 5 has Five has two twos. How many twos does five have? Five has two two. Two twos are four. After we take away four from the five, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? One goes and joins the eight and becomes the eighteen. Eighteen has nine twos. How many twos does six have? Six has three twos. What can we do now? There is not a hell of a lot we can do here. There is not a hell of a lot we can do here because as you can see this number is an odd number. It's not evenly divisible by 4, so we know it's not going to be evenly divisible by 4. We're going to have some remainder. So instead of sitting here and wondering and crying, what do we do, what do we do, let's just divide the bloody thing by 4. Let's just find out what that is in, 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 the, in, the, in the fraction form. We're just going to get a mixed number at the end, that's all. So we're just going to divide by 4, okay? Stay with me in the story. And then I'm, then I'm going to do a long hand if you like, for your benefit. But first I'm going to do here the quick way. How many 4 does 2 have? 2 has no 4s. 2 has no fours. What happens to that 2? Well the 2 goes and joins the 9 and becomes 29. How many 4 does 29 have? 29 has 7 fours. 7 fours are 28. 29 has 7 fours. 7 fours are 28. After we take away 28 from the 29, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 3 and becomes 13. And 13 we know has 3 fours. 3 fours are 12. 3 fours are 12. After we take away 12 from the 13, we have a remainder of 1. We have a remainder of 1, and that remainder of 1 must be divided. That remainder of 1, that remainder of 1 must be divided by 4 because we are dividing by 4. That remainder of 1, that remainder of 1 must be divided by 4. There you go, that's our answer. 73 and $73.25. $73.25 was the average contribution. Now if you like, we can do the same division, same division, longhand. Baby issue, if for your benefit, if you like. Let's do it here. I'm not gonna erase this part so that we can compare the two. So we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna do the same thing again, but this time we're gonna compare our step, okay? So we're gonna divide 586. 586 by 8, we did it already. We divided top and bottom by 2. So what we have is 293. 293, and we're dividing it by 4. Let's begin the process, shall we? Let's begin the process. So we're dividing 293, 293 by 4. Oh, we divide it up and bottom by 4, 4 goes away. So let's begin, shall we? Oh, there was a 0 here. There was a 0 here. How many 4s does 2 have? How many 4s does 2 have? 2 has no 4s. 2 has no 4s. What happens to that 2? That 2 goes and joins the 9s and becomes a 29. How many 4 does 29 have? How many 4 does 29 have? 29 has 7 fours. 29 has 7 fours. 7 fours are 28. After we take away 28 from the 29, we have a remainder of 1. We have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? We have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That one goes and joins the 3 and becomes a 13. That one goes and joins the 3 and becomes a 13. And 13 we know has 3 fours. 3 fours are 12. 3 fours are 12. After we take away 12 from the 13, we have a remainder of 1. We have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That remainder of 1, that remainder of 1 must be divided by 4. Must be divided by 4. So the answer is, the average contribution was $73.25. If you want to put it in decimal. Or if you like, it was $73 and a quarter. That's what we call it. 25 cents is a quarter. So what was the average contribution? $73 and a quarter. Let's do the next problem, shall we? The next problem appears all the way up on page 155. Page 155. Turn to it, please. We are done with all of these things, so I'm going to raise it now. Page 155, well I have to turn there myself first before I ask, turn to page 155 please. On page 155 you will see some very simple problems, very simple, very babyish problem, no big deal, to, no, no big deal. We are told that Emma spends 75 cents buying a used bicycle. So she, she bought it, this is number one on page 155, she bought the bicycle for $75. 
and then she repairs it. She repairs it and she spends another $27. In other words, at the end of the whole story, she has spent well, $102 already. And then we are told that she told, she sells it, she sells it at 40% markup. 40% markup simply means whatever the amount that she spent altogether, she's going to tag on 40% to that amount and that's what she's going to sell it for. And the two columns are the price that she sold it for, column A, the price that she sold it for versus column B, which is $140. 140. Ignore the dollar sign. Well, no, they're not ignore the dollar sign. They actually have the dollar sign. $140. Of course there is a dollar sign because there's a dollar sign here. So, what is the price that she sold it at? Which she sold it at 40% markup. 40% markup, that means she sold it for 140%. 140% of 102. For so 140% of 100, 140% of 100 is exactly 140, isn't it? Therefore, 140% of 102, therefore, 140% of 102, whatever it is, has to be more than 140. Has to be more than 140. One more time, 140% of 102, 100, would have been exactly 140. Answer would have been C. But since we're taking 140% of 102, it of course, whatever it is, is bigger than 140. We don't have to worry about what it is because these are called quantitative comparison questions. Our job is simply to compare the two quantities, not to compute them. So whatever it is, is more than 140. The answer is A. Let's do the next one. Number two. Number two, on the next page. given a picture here, a rectangle, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, oh, I, I, made a, I made a bloody mess of it, it's divided into half, P, Q, P, Q R, S, T, and U, and they are looking for the area of this triangle right here. It says in the picture above P, Q, R, V and V, R, S, T have sides of length 6. So we are told that these are squares. These are all 6. These are all 6's. The question simply is what is the area of the area of the shaded region and how does it compare to 36 that's the column B that's the column A it's too much work to put it on the blackboard the problem itself is very simple how do you find area of a triangle area of a triangle is simply one half base one half base we're talking about triangle we're talking about this triangle here P Q R let's treat this as a base let's treat this as a base and that base is 6, so 1 half base times height, the height would be from here to here of this triangle, which is 12. That's it, we're done. 1 half base times height, uh, 2 is going to cancel out with the 12, becomes a 6, and 6 times 6 is 36, the answer is C. The answer is C. Do you understand? On the way, we could have done this problem. On the way, it's not a big deal, but on the way, we could have done this problem, is to pick up this triangle, or rather not the triangle, this region, let's give it a name here, P, Q, R, S, T, U, let's call this, I'm just going to call it W, pick this up, pick up this, this portion here, pick up this portion right here, pick it up, and put it right here, my actual, it doesn't look like equal, because I did not do a very good job drawing it, but, let's call it W right, right here, but this triangle WRS is the same triangle as PWU. So if you pick up the triangle WRS, pick it up, pick it up and flip it. And if you do that, you realize that the shaded region that you're talking about 
is a square. It's a square. This this thing right here is a square. A six by six. Of course, it's thirty six. The answer is C. Number three. What does number three say? Number three. We are talking about a property tax. We are told. That the property tax, property tax, is p percent of the value of the value of the assessed value, if you like, of the assessed value. What else we are told? We are further told that the tax in 2009 on a home that was valued at 125,000. The value was 125,000, and the tax was 2,500. 2,500. I don't know if you are able to see right away immediately that 250 is exactly two times two times 125, and if you can see that, it makes life easier. 250. Forget about the last zero. 250 is exactly two times this amount. It is two percent. The tax rate is two percent. But if you were able to, if you were unable to do that, uh, we can do out the calculation. But instead of doing the calculation, because we are not supposed to do the calculation, this is a quantitative comparison. As I, as I just reminded you just a few seconds ago, this is a quantitative comparison question, not quantitative computation. We are not supposed to compute anything. We are supposed to simply compare the two quantities. So compare is exactly what we are going to do. Here is what's going on. Follow me. Column B, column A, column B, and we are trying to we we are supposed to compare the tax that we will pay on a home on 160 tax on 160 thousand dollars versus 3 thousand dollars. What is the, what is going to be the tax on a house that is assessed at 160 thousand dollars in this town where we know that the tax Two thousand five hundred dollars on a house that is worth one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, we're going to use that information, and that's going to be our starting point. We know that one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar house. The tax is two thousand five hundred. We need to go all the way up to one sixty. That's one sixty is too far away. Let's divide the both of them by five. If the tax on one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is two thousand five hundred, then the tax on one hundred twenty-five thousand divided by five must be a fifth of that. And what is that? That tells us the tax on twenty-five thousand dollars must be a fifth of that amount. Divide top and bottom by five. Twenty-five has five five and two zeros, five hundred. What we find is that the tax on twenty-five thousand dollars is five hundred. We also know, we also know that the tax, tax on one hundred twenty-five thousand. We also know the tax on one hundred twenty-five thousand is two thousand five hundred. Well, there you go. What we arrive at the conclusion, the conclusion that we arrive here is that the tax on one hundred fifty thousand dollars is exactly three thousand dollars. This is the value. This is the tax. So, if you have a house that's worth one hundred fifty thousand dollars, the tax is going to be exactly three thousand dollars, and therefore, and therefore. The tax on one hundred sixty thousand dollars, whatever it is, is going to be more than three thousand. Because three thousand is the tax on one hundred fifty thousand. The answer is A. Now, what if, what if it, what if this question happened to be a multiple choice questions where you had no choice but to figure out the exact amount, and the answer choices were, you know, three thousand dollars, thirty one hundred dollars, thirty two hundred dollars. These are the answer choices. Three thousand. Thirty-one hundred dollars, thirty-two hundred dollars, whatever it is, you know, just keeps on going. And if you have, we had no choice but to do the work, well, then we will have to do the work. Let's do the work. Again, there are several different ways you can go about it. You can also set it up as a proportion problem. That's the, probably the simplest way to do it. Set it up as a proportion problem. Put the tax on the top. Put the value at the bottom. And we know the tax is. 
$2,500 on a house that's worth $125,000. Question is, what's the value, what's the tax on a house that's worth $160,000? Cross multiplies, isolate the x, and x is equal to, x is going to be equal to $2,500 times $160,000 over over 125,000 watch what happens watch what happens immediately we see three zeros here for 160 160,000 and we see three zeros here let's divide top and bottom by a thousand let's say it is gone now we see 125 here and we see 250 here. 250 is exactly 2 times 125. Let's divide top and bottom by 125. 125 is going to go away, 250 is going to become 2, and then we have a 0 still left over. There we go. 2 times 16 is 32, and then we have 3 zeros. 1, or 2 zeros, sorry. 2 zeros, 1 and 2. 2 times 16 is 32, and then we have a 0 here and a 0 there. Turns out that the tax on the house that is worth $160,000 is exactly $3,200. Which again makes sense because as I told you from the very beginning, it's 2%. You should be able to see right away by looking at it that the tax rate is 2%. Tax rate is 2%. And that was another way, a third way of doing it, which is to figure out the percentage of the tax. Which is to figure out simply the percentage of the tax. And this is how you would do that part if you want to do it that approach. If you want to figure out the percentage. P percent, it says it's P percent, we don't know what P is, but we figure it out. We figure out what P is, which is, we know that it's $2,500 tax, and it is on $125,000 house. But we want this as a percentage, so we multiply by 100. Because this is the decimal. If you want to convert something in percentage, you have to multiply it by 100. If somebody asks you how much is, uh, what percentage is 3 quarter, what percentage is, uh, what percentage is 30 over 40, 30 over 40, it's going to give you 3 quarters. But if you want any percentage, you've got to multiply that 3 quarter by 100. Let's start the process, shall we? Watch what happens. It's very simple. It doesn't take that long. Divide top and bottom by 100. So this 2 0 go away, these 2 0 go away. Divide top and bottom by 10 one more time. I'm going to do it in different color so you can see the sequence. Divide top and bottom by 10. This 0 is going to go away and that 0 goes away. 125 divided by 250 is 2. So there's 2% tax. 2% tax. And the house, and the house is worth, our house was worth $160,000. If, if you take away two zeros, that's 1%. And therefore 2% is twice the amount, $3,200. Do you understand? I think we're making too much fuss about nothing. Actually, I think I'm going to stop right here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.